chapters one through five of the first book of samuel from the young's literal translation of the bible translated by robert young this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by mark penfold chapter one and there is a certain man of ramathaim zophim of the hill country of ephraim and his name is elkanah son of jeroham son of elihu son of tohu son of zuf an ephrathite and he hath two wives the name of the one is hannah and the name of the second penina and penina hath children and hannah hath no children and that man hath gone up out of his city from time to time to bow himself and to sacrifice before jehovah of hosts in shiloh and there are two sons of eli hophni and phinehas priests to jehovah and the day cometh and elkanah sacrificeth and he hath given to penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions and to hannah he giveth a certain portion double for he hath loved hannah and jehovah hath shut her womb and her adversity hath also provoked her greatly so as to make her tremble for jehovah hath shut up her womb and so he doth year by year from the time of her going up into the house of jehovah so it provoketh her and she weepeth and doth not eat and elkanah her husband saith to her hannah why weepest thou and why dost thou not eat and why is thy heart afflicted am i not better to thee than ten sons and hannah riseth after eating in shiloh and after drinking and eli the priest is sitting on the throne by the side-post of the temple of jehovah and she is bitter in soul and prayeth unto jehovah and weepeth greatly and voweth a vow and saith jehovah of hosts if thou dost certainly look on the affliction of thy handmaid and hast remembered me and dost not forget thy handmaid and hast given to thy handmaid seed of men then i have given him to jehovah all days of his life and a razor doth not go up upon his head and it hath been when she multiplied praying before jehovah that eli is watching her mouth and hannah she is speaking to her heart only her lips are moving and her voice is not heard and eli reckoneth her to be drunken and eli saith unto her until when art thou drunken turn aside thy wine from thee and hannah answereth and saith no my lord a woman sharply pained in spirit i am and wine and strong drink i have not drunk and i pour out my soul before jehovah put not thy handmaid before a daughter of worthlessness for from the abundance of my meditation and of my provocation i have spoken hitherto and eli answereth and saith go in peace and the god of israel doth give thy petition which thou hast asked of him and she saith let thy handmaid find grace in thine eyes and the woman goeth on her way and eateth and her countenance hath not been sad for it any more and they rise early in the morning and bow themselves before jehovah and turn back and come in unto their house in ramah and elkanah knoweth hannah his wife and jehovah remembereth her and it cometh to pass at the revolution of the days that hannah conceiveth and beareth a son and calleth his name samuel for from jehovah i have asked him and the man elkanah goeth up and all his house to sacrifice to jehovah the sacrifice of the days and his vow and hannah hath not gone up for she said to her husband till the youth is weaned then i have brought him in and he hath appeared before the face of jehovah and dwelt there unto the age and elkanah her husband saith to her do that which is good in thine eyes abide till thy weaning him only jehovah establish his word and the woman abideth and suckleth her son till she hath weaned him 
and she causeth him to go up with her when she hath weaned him with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and she bringeth him into the house of jehovah at shiloh and the youth is but a youth and they slaughter the bullock and bring in the youth unto eli and she saith o oh, my lord thy soul liveth my lord i am the woman who stood with thee in this place to pray unto jehovah for this youth i prayed and jehovah doth give to me my portion which i asked of him and also i have caused him to be asked for jehovah all the days that he hath lived he is asked for jehovah and he boweth himself there before jehovah chapter two and hannah prayeth and saith my heart hath exulted in jehovah my horn hath been high in jehovah my mouth hath been large over mine enemies for i have rejoiced in thy salvation there is none holy like jehovah for there is none save thee and there is no rock like our god ye multiply not ye speak haughtily the old saying goeth out from your mouth for a god of knowledge is jehovah and by him actions are weighed bows of the mighty are broken and the stumbling have girded on strength the satiated for bread hired themselves and the hungry have ceased while the barren hath borne seven and she abounding with sons hath languished jehovah putteth to death and keepeth alive he bringeth down to sheol and bringeth up jehovah dispossesseth and he maketh rich he maketh low yea he maketh high he raiseth from the dust the poor from a dunghill he lifteth up the needy to cause them to sit with nobles yea a throne of honour he doth cause them to inherit for to jehovah are the fixtures of earth and he setteth on them the habitable world the feet of his saints he keepeth and the wicked in darkness are silent for not by power doth man become mighty jehovah broken down are his adversaries against them in the heavens he thundereth jehovah judgeth the ends of earth and giveth strength to his king and exalteth the horn of his anointed and elkanah goeth to ramath unto his house and the youth hath been serving jehovah in the presence of eli the priest and the sons of eli are sons of worthlessness they have not known jehovah and the custom of the priests with the people is any man sacrificing a sacrifice then hath the servant of the priest come in when the flesh is boiling and the hook of three teeth in his hand and hath struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot all that the hook bringeth up doth the priest take for himself thus they do to all israel who are coming in there in shiloh also before they make perfume with the fat then hath the priest's servant come in and said to the man who is sacrificing give flesh to roast for the priest and he doth not take of thee flesh boiled but raw and the man saith unto him let them surely make a perfume as to-day with the fat then take to thee as thy soul desireth and he hath said to him surely now thou dost give and if not i have taken by strength and the sin of the young men is very great in the presence of jehovah for the men have despised the offering of jehovah and samuel is ministering in the presence of jehovah a youth girt with an ephod of linen and a small upper coat doth his mother make to him and she hath brought it up to him from time to time in her coming up with her husband to sacrifice the sacrifice of the time and eli blessed elkanah and his wife and said jehovah doth appoint for the seed of this woman for the petition which she asked for jehovah and they have gone to their place when jehovah hath looked after hannah then she conceiveth and beareth three sons and two daughters and the youth samuel groweth up with jehovah and eli is very old and hath heard all that his sons do to all israel and how that they lie with the women who are assembling at the opening of the tent of meeting and he saith to them 
why do ye things like these for i am hearing of your evil words from all the people these nay my sons for the report which i am hearing is not good causing the people of jehovah to transgress if a man sin against a man then hath god judged him but if against jehovah a man sin who doth pray for him and they hearken not to the voice of their father though jehovah hath delighted to put them to death and the youth samuel is going on and growing up and is good both with jehovah and also with men and there cometh a man of god unto eli and saith unto him thus said jehovah was i really revealed unto the house of thy father in their being in egypt before pharaoh's house even to choose him out of all the tribes of israel to me for a priest to go up on mine altar to make a perfume to bear an ephod before me and i give to the house of thy father all the fire offerings of the sons of israel why do ye kick at my sacrifice and at mine offering which i commanded in my habitation and dost honour thy sons above me to make yourselves fat from the first part of every offering of israel of my people therefore the affirmation of jehovah god of israel i certainly said thy house and the house of thy father do walk up and down before me to the age and now the affirmation of jehovah far be it from me for he who is honouring me i honour and those despising me are lightly esteemed lo days are coming and i have cut off thine arm and the arm of the house of thy father that an old man is not in thy house and thou hast beheld an adversary in my habitation in all that he doth good with israel and there is not an old man in thy house all the days and the man i cut not off of thine from mine altar is to consume thine eyes and to grieve thy soul and all the increase of thy house do die men and this is to thee the sign that cometh unto thy two sons unto hophni and phineas in one day they die both of them and i have raised up for me a steadfast priest as in my heart and in my soul he doth do and i have built for him a steadfast house and he hath walked up and down before mine anointed all the days and it hath been every one who is left in thy house doth come in to bow himself to him for a wage of silver and a cake of bread and hath said admit me i pray thee unto one of the priest's offices to eat a morsel of bread chapter three and the youth samuel is serving jehovah before eli and the word of jehovah hath been precious in those days there is no vision broken forth and it cometh to pass at that time that eli is lying down in his place and his eyes have begun to be dim he is not able to see and the lamp of god is not yet extinguished and samuel is lying down in the temple of jehovah where the ark of god is and jehovah calleth unto samuel and he saith here am i and he runneth unto eli and saith here am i for thou hast called for me and he saith i called not turn back lie down and he goeth and lieth down and jehovah addeth to call again samuel and samuel riseth and goeth unto eli and saith here am i for thou hast called for me and he saith i have not called my son turn back lie down and samuel hath not yet known jehovah and the word of jehovah is not yet revealed unto him and jehovah addeth to call samuel the third time and he riseth and goeth unto eli and saith here am i for thou hast called for me and eli understandeth that jehovah is calling to the youth and eli saith to samuel go lie down and it hath been if he doth call unto thee that thou hast said speak jehovah for thy servant is hearing and samuel goeth and lieth down in his place and jehovah cometh and stationeth himself and calleth as time by time samuel samuel 
And Samuel saith, Speak, for thy servant is hearing. And Jehovah saith unto Samuel, Lo, I am doing a thing in Israel at which the two ears of every one hearing it do tingle. In that day I establish unto Eli all that I have spoken unto his house, beginning and completing, and I have declared to him that I am judging his house to the age for the iniquity which he hath known, for his sons are making themselves vile, and he hath not restrained them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli, the iniquity of the house of Eli is not atoned for by sacrifice and by offering unto the age. And Samuel lieth till the morning, and openeth the doors of the house of Jehovah, and Samuel is afraid of declaring the vision unto Eli. And Eli calleth Samuel, and saith, Samuel, my son. And he saith, Here am I. And he saith, What is the word which he hath spoken unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. So doth God do to thee, and so doth he add, if thou hidest from me a word of all the words that he hath spoken unto thee. And Samuel declareth to him the whole of the words, and hath not hid from him. And he saith, It is Jehovah. That which is good in his eyes he doth. And Samuel groweth up, and Jehovah hath been with him, and hath not let fall any of his words to the earth. And all Israel know, from Dan even unto Beersheba, that Samuel is established for a prophet to Jehovah. And Jehovah addeth to appear in Shiloh, for Jehovah hath been revealed unto Samuel in Shiloh by the word of Jehovah. Chapter 4 And the word of Samuel is to all Israel, and Israel goeth out to meet the Philistines for battle, and they encamp by Eben-Ezer, and the Philistines have encamped in Aphek. And the Philistines set themselves in array to meet Israel, and the battle spreadeth itself, and Israel is smitten before the Philistines, and they smite among the ranks in the field about four thousand men. And the people cometh in unto the camp, and the elders of Israel say, why hath Jehovah smitten us to-day before the Philistines? We take unto us from Shiloh the ark of the covenant of Jehovah, and it cometh into our midst, and he doth save us out of the hand of our enemies. And the people sendeth to Shiloh, and they take up thence the ark of the covenant of Jehovah of hosts, inhabiting the cherubs. And there are two sons of Eli with the ark of the covenant of God, Hophni and Phinehas. And it cometh to pass, at the coming in of the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah unto the camp, that all Israel shout, a great shout, and the earth is moved. And the Philistines hear the noise of the shouting, and say, What is the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they perceive that the Ark of Jehovah hath come in unto the camp. And the Philistines are afraid, for they said, God hath come in unto the camp. And they say, Woe to us, for there hath not been like this heretofore. Woe to us! Who doth deliver us out of the hand of these honorable gods? These are the gods who are smiting the Egyptians with every plague in the wilderness. Strengthen yourselves and become men, O Philistines, lest ye do service to Hebrews as they have done to you. Then ye have become men and have fought. And the Philistines fight and Israel is smitten, and they flee each to his tents, and the blow is very great, and their fall of Israel thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of God hath been taken, and the two sons of Eli have died, Hophni and Phinehas. And a man of Benjamin runneth out of the ranks, and cometh into Shiloh on that day, and his long robes are rent, and earth on his head. And he cometh in, and lo, Eli is sitting on the throne by the side of the way, watching, for his heart hath been trembling for the ark of God, and the man hath come in to declare it in the city, and all the city crieth out. And Eli heareth the noise of the cry, and saith, What? The noise of this tumult? And the man hasted, and cometh in, and declareth to Eli, and Eli is a son of ninety and eight years, and his eyes have stood, and he hath not been able to see. 
and the man saith unto eli i am he who hath come out of the ranks and i out of the ranks have fled to-day and he saith what hath been the matter my son and he who is bearing tidings answereth and saith israel hath fled before the philistines and also a great slaughter hath been among the people and also thy two sons have died hophni and phinehas and the ark of god hath been captured and it cometh to pass at his mentioning the ark of god that he falleth from off the throne backward by the side of the gate and his neck is broken and he dieth for the man is old and heavy and he hath judged israel forty years and his daughter-in-law wife of phineas is pregnant about to bear and she heareth the report of the taking of the ark of god that her father-in-law and her husband have died and she boweth and beareth for her pains have turned upon her and at the time of her death when the women who are standing by her say fear not for a son thou hast borne she hath not answered nor set her heart to it and she calleth the youth ichabod saying honour hath removed from israel because of the taking of the ark of god and because of her father-in-law and her husband and she saith honour hath removed from israel for the ark of god hath been taken chapter five and the philistines have taken the ark of god and bring it in from ebenezer to ashdod and the philistines take the ark of god and bring it into the house of dagon and set it near dagon and the ashdodites rise early on the morrow and lo dagon is fallen on its face to the earth before the ark of jehovah and they take dagon and put it back to its place and they rise early in the morning on the morrow and lo dagon is fallen on its face to the earth before the ark of jehovah and the head of dagon and the two palms of its hands are cut off at the threshold only the fishy part hath been left to him therefore the priests of dagon and all those coming into the house of dagon tread not on the threshold of dagon in ashdod till this day and the hand of jehovah is heavy on the ashdodites and he maketh them desolate and smiteth them with emerods ashdod and its borders and the men of ashdod see that it is so and have said the ark of the god of israel doth not abide with us for hard hath been his hand upon us and upon dagon our god and they send and gather all the princes of the philistines unto them and say what do we do to the ark of the god of israel and they say to gath let the ark of the god of israel be brought round and they bring round the ark of the god of israel and it cometh to pass after they have brought it round that the hand of jehovah is against the city a very great destruction and he smiteth the men of the city from small even unto great and break forth on them do emerods and they send the ark of god to ekron and it cometh to pass at the coming in of the ark of god to ekron that the ekronites cry out saying they have brought round unto us the ark of the god of israel to put us to death and our people and they send and gather all the princes of the philistines and say send away the ark of the god of israel and it turneth back to its place and it doth not put us to death and our people for there hath been a deadly destruction throughout all the city very heavy hath the hand of god been there and the men who have not died have been smitten with emerods and the cry of the city goeth up into the heavens the end of chapters one through five recording by mark penfold chapters six through ten of the first book of samuel from the young's literal translation of the bible this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter six and the ark of jehovah is in the field of the philistines seven months and the philistines call for priests and for diviners saying what do we do to the ark of jehovah let us know wherewith we send it to its place and they say 
if ye are sending away the ark of the god of israel you do not send it away empty for ye do certainly send back to him a guilt offering then ye are healed and it hath been known to you why his hand doth not turn aside from you and they say what is the guilt offering which we send back to him and they say the number of the princes of the philistines five golden emeralds and five golden mice for one plague is to you all and to your princes and ye have made images of your emeralds and images of your mice that are corrupting the land and have given honour to the god of israel it may be he doth lighten his hand from off you and from off your gods and from off your land and why do ye harden your heart as the egyptians and pharaoh hardened their heart do they not when he hath rolled himself upon them send them away and they go and now take and make one new cart and two suckling kine on which a yoke hath not gone up and ye have bound the kine in the cart and caused their young ones to turn back from after them to the house and ye have taken the ark of jehovah and put it on the cart and the vessels of gold which ye have returned to him a guilt offering ye put in a coffer on its side and have sent it away and it hath gone and ye have seen if the way of its own border it goeth up to beth shemesh he hath done to us this great evil and if not then we have known that his hand hath not come against us an accident it hath been to us and the men do so and take two suckling kine and bind them in the cart and their young ones they have shut up in the house and they place the ark of jehovah upon the cart and the coffer and the golden mice and the images of their emeralds and the kine go straight in the way on the way to beth shemesh in one highway they have gone going and lowing and have not turned aside right or left and the princes of the philistines are going after them unto the border of beth shemesh and the beth shemeshites are reaping their wheat harvest in the valley and they lift up their eyes and see the ark and rejoice to see it and the cart hath come in unto the field of joshua the beth shemeshite and standeth there and there is a great stone and they cleave the wood of the cart and the kine they have caused to ascend a burnt offering to jehovah and the levites have taken down the ark of jehovah and the coffer which is with it in which are the vessels of gold and place them on the great stone and the men of beth shemesh have caused to ascend burnt offerings and sacrifice sacrifices in that day to jehovah and the five princes of the philistines have seen it and turned back to ekron on that day and these are the golden emeralds which the philistines have sent back a guilt offering to jehovah for ashdod one for gaza one for ashkelon one for gath one for ekron one and the golden mice the number of all the cities of the philistines for the five princes from the fenced city even unto the hamlet of the villages even unto the great meadow on which they placed the ark of jehovah are unto this day in the field of joshua the beth shemeshite and he smiteth among the men of beth shemesh for they looked into the ark of jehovah yea he smiteth among the people seventy men fifty chief men and the people mourn because jehovah smote among the people a great smiting and the men of beth shemesh say who is able to stand before jehovah this holy god and unto whom doth he go up from us and they send messengers unto the inhabitants of kirjath jearim saying the philistines have sent back the ark of jehovah come down take it up unto you chapter seven and the men of kirjath jearim come and bring up the ark of jehovah and bring it in unto the house of abinadab in the height and eleazar his son they have sanctified to keep the ark of jehovah and it cometh to pass from the day of the dwelling of the ark in kirjath jearim that the days are multiplied yea they are twenty years and wail do all the house of israel after jehovah and samuel speaketh unto all the house of israel saying if with all your heart ye are turning back unto jehovah turn aside the gods of the stranger from your midst and ashtaroth and prepare your heart unto jehovah and serve him only and he doth deliver you out of the hand of the philistines 
and the sons of Israel turn aside the Baalim and Ashtaroth, and serve Jehovah alone. And Samuel saith, Gather all Israel to Mizpeh, and I pray for you unto Jehovah. And they are gathered to Mizpeh, and draw water, and pour out before Jehovah, and fast on that day, and say there, We have sinned against Jehovah. And Samuel judgeth the sons of Israel in Mizpah. And the Philistines hear that the sons of Israel have gathered themselves to Mizpah, and the princes of the Philistines go up against Israel, and the sons of Israel hear, and are afraid of the presence of the Philistines. And the sons of Israel say unto Samuel, Keep not silent for us from crying unto Jehovah our God, and he doth save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel taketh a fat lamb, and causeth it to go up, a burnt offering whole to Jehovah. And Samuel crieth unto Jehovah for Israel, and Jehovah answereth him. And Samuel is causing the burnt offering to go up, and the Philistines have drawn nigh to battle against Israel. And Jehovah doth thunder with a great noise on that day upon the Philistines, and troubleth them, and they are smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel go out from Mizpah, and pursue the Philistines, and smite them unto the place of beth -car. And Samuel taketh a stone, and setteth it between Mizpah and Shen, and calleth its name Eben-Ezer, saying, Hitherto hath Jehovah helped us. And the Philistines are humbled, and have not added any more to come into the border of Israel, and the hand of Jehovah is on the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines have taken from Israel are restored to Israel, from Ekron even unto Gath, and their border hath Israel delivered out of the hand of the Philistines, and there is peace between Israel and the Amorite. And Samuel judgeth Israel all the days of his life, and he hath gone from year to year, and gone round Bethel, and Gilgal, and Mizpah, and judged Israel in all these places. And his returning is to Ramath, for there is his house. And there he hath judged Israel, and he buildeth there an altar to Jehovah. Chapter 8 And it cometh to pass, when Samuel is aged, that he maketh his sons judges over Israel. And the name of his firstborn son is Joel, and the name of his second Abiah, judges in Beersheba. And his sons have not walked in his ways, and turn aside after the dishonest gain, and take a bribe, and turn aside judgment. And all the elders of Israel gather themselves together, and come in unto Samuel to Ramath, and say unto him, Lo, thou hast become aged, and thy sons have not walked in thy ways. Now appoint to us a king to judge us like all the nations. And the thing is evil in the eyes of Samuel, when they have said, Give to us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayeth unto Jehovah, and Jehovah saith unto Samuel, Hearken to the voice of the people, to all that they say unto thee. For thee they have not rejected, but me they have rejected from reigning over them, according to all the works that they have done from the day of my bringing them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, when they forsake me and serve other gods, so they are doing also to thee. And now hearken to their voice. Only surely thou dost certainly protest to them, and hast declared to them the custom of the king who doth reign over them. And Samuel speaketh all the words of Jehovah unto the people who are asking from him a king, and saith, This is the custom of the king who doth reign over you. Your sons he doth take, and hath appointed for himself among his chariots, and among his horsemen, and they have run before his chariots, also to appoint for himself heads of thousands and heads of fifties also to plough his ploughing, and to reap his reaping, and to make instruments of his war, and instruments of his charioteer, and your daughters he doth take for perfumers, and for cooks, and for bakers, and your fields, and your vineyards, and your oliveyards, the best, 
he doth take and hath given to his servants and your seed and your vineyards he doth tithe and hath given to his eunuchs and to his servants and your men servants and your maid servants and your young men the best and your asses he doth take and hath prepared for his own work your flock he doth tithe and ye are to him for servants and ye have cried out in that day because of the king whom ye have chosen for yourselves and jehovah doth not answer you in that day and the people refuse to hearken to the voice of samuel and say nay but a king is over us and we have been even we like all the nations and our king hath judged us and gone out before us and fought our battles and samuel heareth all the words of the people and speaketh to them in the ears of jehovah and jehovah saith unto samuel hearken to their voice and thou hast caused to reign over them a king and samuel saith unto the men of israel go ye each to his city chapter nine and there is a man of benjamin and his name is kish son of abiel son of zeror son of becherath son of Ephiah, a benjamite mighty of valor and he hath a son and his name is saul a choice youth and goodly and there is not a man among the sons of israel goodlier than he from his shoulder and upward higher than any of the people and the asses of kish father of saul are lost and kish saith unto saul his son take i pray thee with thee one of the young men and rise go seek the asses and he passeth over through the hill country of ephraim and passeth over through the land of shalisha and they have not found and they pass over through the land of shaalim and they are not and he passeth over through the land of benjamin and they have not found they have come in unto the land of zuf and saul hath said to his young man who is with him come and we turn back lest my father leave off from the asses and hath been sorrowful for us and he saith to him lo i pray thee a man of god is in this city and the man is honoured all that he speaketh doth certainly come now we go there it may be he doth declare to us our way on which we have gone and saul saith to his young man and lo we go and what do we bring in to the man for the bread hath gone from our vessels and a present there is not to bring in to the man of god what is with us and the young man addeth to answer saul and saith lo there is found with me a fourth of a shekel of silver and i have given to the man of god and he hath declared to us our way formerly in israel thus said the man in his going to seek god come and we go unto the seer for the prophet of to-day is called formerly the seer and saul saith to his young man thy word is good come we go and they go unto the city where the man of god is they are going up in the ascent of the city and have found young women going out to draw water and say to them is the seer in this place and they answer them and say he is lo before thee haste now for to-day he hath come into the city for the people hath a stated sacrifice in a high place at your going into the city so ye do find him before he doth go up into the high place to eat for the people do not eat till his coming for he doth bless the sacrifice afterwards they eat who are called and now go up for at this time ye find him and they go up into the city they are coming into the midst of the city and lo samuel is coming out to meet them to go up to the high place and jehovah had uncovered the ear of samuel one day before the coming of saul saying at this time to-morrow i send unto thee a man out of the land of benjamin and thou hast anointed him for leader over my people israel and he hath saved my people out of the hand of the philistines for i have seen my people for its cry hath come in unto me when samuel hath seen saul then hath jehovah answered him lo the man of whom i have spoken unto thee this one doth restrain my people 
and saul draweth nigh to samuel in the midst of the gate and saith declare i pray thee to me where is this the seer's house and samuel answereth saul and saith i am the seer go up before me into the high place and ye have eaten with me to-day and i have sent thee away in the morning and all that is in thy heart i declare to thee as to the asses which are lost to thee this day three days set not thy heart to them for they have been found and to whom is all the desire of israel is it not to thee and to all thy father's house and saul answereth and saith am not i a benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of israel and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of benjamin and why hast thou spoken unto me according to this word and samuel taketh saul and his young man and bringeth them into the chamber and giveth to them a place at the head of those called and they are about thirty men and samuel saith to the cook give the portion which i give to thee of which i said unto thee set it by thee and the cook lifteth up the leg and that which is on it and setteth before saul and he saith lo that which is left set it before thee eat for to this appointed season it is kept for thee saying the people i have called and saul eateth with samuel on that day and they come down from the high place to the city and he speaketh with saul on the roof and they rise early and it cometh to pass at the ascending of the dawn that samuel calleth unto saul on the roof saying rise and i send thee away and saul riseth and they go out both of them he and samuel without they are going down in the extremity of the city and samuel hath said unto saul say to the young man that he pass on before us and he passeth on and thou stand at this time and i cause thee to hear the word of god chapter ten and samuel taketh the vial of the oil and poureth on his head and kisseth him and saith is it not because jehovah hath appointed thee over his inheritance for leader in thy going to-day from me then thou hast found two men by the grave of rachel in the border of benjamin at zelzah and they have said unto thee the asses have been found which thou hast gone to seek and lo thy father hath left the matter of the asses and hath sorrowed for you saying what do i do for my son and thou hast passed on thence and beyond and hast come in unto the oak of tabor and found thee there have three men going up unto god to bethel one bearing three kids and one bearing three cakes of bread and one bearing a bottle of wine and they have asked of thee of welfare and given to thee two loaves and thou hast received from their hand afterwards thou dost come unto the hill of god where the garrison of the philistines is and it cometh to pass at thy coming in thither to the city that thou hast met a band of prophets coming down from the high place and before them psaltery and tabret and pipe and harp and they are prophesying and prospered over thee hath the spirit of jehovah and thou hast prophesied with them and hast been turned to another man and it hath been when these signs come to thee do for thyself as thy hand findeth for god is with thee and thou hast gone down before me to gilgal and lo i am going down unto thee to cause to ascend burnt offerings to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings seven days thou dost wait till my coming in unto thee and i have made known to thee that which thou dost do and it hath been at his turning his shoulder to go from samuel that god turneth to him another heart and all these signs come on that day and they come in thither to the height and lo a band of prophets to meet him and prosper over him doth the spirit of god and he prophesieth in their midst and it cometh to pass all his acquaintance heretofore see and lo with prophets he hath prophesied and the people say one unto another 
what is this hath happened to the son of kish is saul also among the prophets and a man thence answereth and saith and who is their father therefore it hath been for a simile is saul also among the prophets and he ceaseth from prophesying and cometh in to the high place and the uncle of saul saith unto him and unto his young man whither went ye and he saith to seek the asses and we see that they are not and we come in unto samuel and the uncle of saul saith declare i pray thee to me what samuel said to you and saul saith unto his uncle he certainly declared to us that the asses were found and of the matter of the kingdom he hath not declared to him that which samuel said and samuel calleth the people unto jehovah to mizpah and saith unto the sons of israel thus said jehovah god of israel i have brought up israel out of egypt and i deliver you out of the hand of the egyptians and out of the hand of all the kingdoms who are oppressing you and ye to-day have rejected your god who is himself your saviour out of all your evils and your distresses and ye say nay but a king thou dost set over us and now station yourselves before jehovah by your tribes and by your thousands and samuel bringeth near the whole tribes of israel and the tribe of benjamin is captured and he bringeth near the tribe of benjamin by its families and the family of matri is captured and saul son of kish is captured and they seek him and he hath not been found and they ask again at jehovah hath the man yet come hither and jehovah saith lo he hath been hidden near the vessels and they run and bring him thence and he stationed himself in the midst of the people and he is higher than any of the people from his shoulder and upward and samuel saith unto all the people have ye seen him on whom jehovah hath fixed for there is none like him among all the people and all the people shout and say let the king live and samuel speaketh unto the people the right of the kingdom and writeth in a book and placeth before jehovah and samuel sendeth all the people away each to his house and also saul hath gone to his house to gibeah and the force go with him whose heart god hath touched and the sons of worthlessness have said what this one doth save us and they despise him and have not brought to him a present and he is as one deaf the end of chapters six through ten recording by mark penfold chapters eleven through fifteen of the first book of samuel from the young's literal translation of the bible translated by robert young this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter eleven and nahash the ammonite cometh up and encampeth against jabesh gilead and all the men of jabesh say unto nahash make with us a covenant and we serve thee and nahash the ammonite saith unto them for this i covenant with you by picking out to you every right eye and i have put it a reproach on all israel and the elders of jabesh say to him let us alone seven days and we send messengers into all the border of israel and if there is none saving us then we have come out unto thee and the messengers come to gibeah of saul and speak the words in the ears of the people and all the people lift up their voice and weep and lo saul hath come after the herd out of the field and saul saith what to the people that they weep and they recount to him the words of the men of jabesh and the spirit of god doth prosper over saul in his hearing these words and his anger burneth greatly and he taketh a couple of oxen and cutteth them in pieces and sendeth through all the border of israel by the hand of the messengers saying he who is not coming out after saul and after samuel thus it is done to his oxen 
and the fear of Jehovah falleth on the people, and they come out as one man. And he inspecteth them in Bezek, and the sons of Israel are three hundred thousand, and the men of Judah thirty thousand. And they say to the messengers who are coming, Thus do ye say to the men of Jabesh-Gilead, Tomorrow ye have safety, by the heat of the sun. And the messengers come and declare to the men of Jabesh, and they rejoice. And the men of Jabesh say to the Ammonites, Tomorrow we come out unto you, and ye have done to us according to all that is good in your eyes. And it cometh to pass on the morrow, that Saul putteth the people in three detachments, and they come into the midst of the camp in the morning watch, and smite Ammon till the heat of the day. And it cometh to pass that those left are scattered, and there have not been left of them two together. And the people say unto Samuel, Who is he that saith, Saul doth reign over us? Give ye up the men, and we put them to death. And Saul saith, There is no man put to death on this day, for to-day hath Jehovah wrought salvation in Israel. And Samuel saith unto the people, Come, and we go to Gilgal, and renew the kingdom there. And all the people go to Gilgal, and cause Saul to reign there before Jehovah in Gilgal, and sacrifice there sacrifices of peace offerings before Jehovah. And there Saul rejoiceth, and all the men of Israel very greatly. Chapter 12 And Samuel saith unto all Israel, Lo, I have hearkened to your voice, to all that ye said to me, and I caused to reign over you a king. And now, lo, the king is walking habitually before you, and I have become aged and grey-headed, and my sons, lo, they are with you, and I have walked habitually before you from my youth till this day. Lo, here am I. Testify against me, over against Jehovah, and over against his anointed. Whose ox have I taken, and whose ass have I taken, and whom have I oppressed? Whom have I bruised, and of whose hand have I taken a ransom, and hide mine eyes with it, and I restore to you? And they say, Thou hast not oppressed us, nor hast thou crushed us, nor hast thou taken from the hand of any one anything. And he saith unto them, A witness is Jehovah against you, and a witness is his anointed this day, that ye have not found anything in my hand. And they say, A witness! And Samuel saith unto the people, Jehovah, he who made Moses and Aaron, and who brought up your fathers out of the land of Egypt, and now station yourselves and i judge you before jehovah with all the righteous acts of jehovah which he did with you and with your fathers when jacob hath come into egypt and your fathers cry unto jehovah then jehovah sendeth moses and aaron and they bring out your fathers from egypt and cause them to dwell in this place and they forget jehovah their god and he selleth them into the hand of sisera head of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fight against them, and they cry unto Jehovah, and say, We have sinned, because we have forsaken Jehovah, and served the Baalim, and Ashtaroth. And now, deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we serve thee. And Jehovah sendeth Jerubbaal, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivereth you out of the hand of your enemies round about, and ye dwell confidently. And ye see that Nahash, king of the Benai Ammon, hath come against you, and ye say to me, Nay, but a king doth reign over us, and Jehovah your God is your king. And now, lo, the king whom ye have chosen, whom ye have asked, and lo, Jehovah hath placed over you a king. If ye fear Jehovah, and have served him, and hearkened to his voice, then ye do not provoke the mouth of Jehovah, and ye have been, both ye and the king who hath reigned over you, after Jehovah your God. 
and if ye do not hearken to the voice of jehovah then ye have provoked the mouth of jehovah and the hand of jehovah hath been against you and against your fathers also now station yourselves and see this great thing which jehovah is doing before your eyes is it not wheat harvest to-day i call unto jehovah and he doth give voices and rain and know ye and see that your evil is great which ye have done in the eyes of jehovah to ask for you a king and samuel calleth unto jehovah and jehovah giveth voices and rain on that day and all the people greatly feared jehovah and samuel and all the people say unto samuel pray for thy servants unto jehovah thy god and we do not die for we have added to all our sins evil to ask for us a king and samuel saith unto the people fear not ye have done all this evil only turn not aside from after jehovah and ye have served jehovah with all your heart and ye do not turn aside after the vain things which do not profit nor deliver for they are vain for jehovah doth not leave his people on account of his great name for jehovah hath been pleased to make you to him for a people i also far be it from me to sin against jehovah by ceasing to pray for you and i have directed you in the good and upright way only fear ye jehovah and ye have served him in truth with all your heart for see that which he hath made great with you and if ye really do evil both ye and your king are consumed chapter thirteen a son of a year is saul in his reigning yea two years he hath reigned over israel and saul chooseth for himself three thousand men out of israel and two thousand are with saul in michmash and in the hill country of bethel and a thousand have been with jonathan in gibeah of benjamin and the remnant of the people he hath sent each to his tents and jonathan smiteth the garrison of the philistines which is in geba and the philistines hear and saul hath blown with a trumpet through all the land saying let the hebrews hear and all israel have heard saying saul hath smitten the garrison of the philistines and also israel hath been abhorred by the philistines and the people are called after saul to gilgal and the philistines have been gathered to fight with israel thirty thousand chariots and six thousand horsemen and a people as the sand which is on the seashore for multitude and they come up and encamp in michmash east of beth aven and the men of israel have seen that they are distressed that the people hath been oppressed and the people hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits and hebrews have passed over the jordan to the land of gad and gilead and saul is yet in gilgal and all the people have trembled after him and he waiteth seven days according to the appointment with samuel and samuel hath not come to gilgal and the people are scattered from off him and saul saith bring nigh unto me the burnt offering and the peace offerings and he causeth the burnt offering to ascend and it cometh to pass at his completing to cause the burnt offering to ascend that lo samuel hath come and saul goeth out to meet him to bless him and samuel saith what hast thou done and saul saith because i saw that the people were scattered from off me and thou hadst not come at the appointment of the days and the philistines are gathered to michmash and i say now do the philistines come down unto me to gilgal and the face of jehovah i have not appeased and i force myself and cause the burnt offering to ascend and samuel saith unto saul thou hast been foolish thou hast not kept the command of jehovah thy god which he commanded thee for now had jehovah established thy kingdom over israel unto the age and now thy kingdom doth not stand jehovah hath sought for himself a man according to his own heart and jehovah chargeth him for leader over his people for thou hast not kept that which jehovah commanded thee and samuel riseth and goeth up from gilgal to gibeah of benjamin 
and Saul inspecteth the people who are found with him, about six hundred men. And Saul, and Jonathan his son, and the people who are found with them, are abiding in Gibeah of Benjamin, and the Philistines have encamped at Michmash, and the destroyer goeth out from the camp of the Philistines, three detachments. The one detachment turneth unto the way of Ophrah, unto the land of Shual, and the one attachment turneth the way of Beth Horon, and the one attachment turneth the way of the border which is looking on the valley of the Zeboim toward the wilderness. And an artificer is not found in all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make sword or spear. And all Israel go down to the Philistines to sharpen each his plowshare, and his coulter, and his axe, and his mattock. And there hath been the file for mattocks, and for coulters, and for three-pronged rakes, and for the axes, and to set up the goads. And it hath been in the day of battle, that there hath not been found sword and spear in the hand of any of the people who are with Saul and with Jonathan, and there is found to Saul and to Jonathan his son. And the station of the Philistines goeth out unto the passage of Michmash. Chapter 14 and the day cometh that Jonathan, son of Saul, saith unto the young man bearing his weapons, Come, and we pass over unto the station of the Philistines, which is on the other side of this. And to his father he hath not declared it. And Saul is abiding at the extremity of Gibeah, under the pomegranate which is in Migron, and the people who are with him, about six hundred men. And Ahiah, son of Ahitub, brother of Ichabod, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, priest of Jehovah in Shiloh, bearing an ephod, and the people knew not that Jonathan hath gone. And between the passages where Jonathan sought to pass over unto the station of the Philistines is the edge of a rock on the one side, and the edge of a rock on the other side. And the name of the one is Bozes, and the name of the other Sena. The one edge is fixed on the north over against Michmash, and the one on the south over against Gibeah. And Jonathan saith unto the young man bearing his weapons, Come, and we pass over unto the station of these uncircumcised. It may be Jehovah doth work for us, for there is no restraint to Jehovah to save by many or by few. And the bearer of his weapons saith to him, Do all that is in thy heart, turn for thee, Lo, I am with thee as thine own heart. And Jonathan saith, Lo, we are passing over unto the men, and are revealed unto them. If thus they say unto us, Stand still till we have come unto you, then we have stood in our place, and do not go up unto them. And if thus they say, Come up against us, then we have gone up, for Jehovah hath given them into our hand, and this to us is the sign." and revealed are both of them unto the station of the philistines and the philistines say lo hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hid themselves and the men of the station answer jonathan and the bearer of his weapons and say come up unto us and we cause you to know something and jonathan saith unto the bearer of his weapons come up after me for jehovah hath given them into the hand of israel and Jonathan goeth up on his hands and on his feet, and the bearer of his weapons after him. And they fall before Jonathan, and the bearer of his weapons is putting to death after him. And the first smiting which Jonathan and the bearer of his weapons have smitten is of about twenty men, in about half a furrow of a yoke of a field. And there is a trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The station and the destroyers have trembled, even they and the earth shaketh, and it becometh a trembling of God. And the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin see, and lo, the multitude hath melted away, and it goeth on, and is beaten down. And Saul saith to the people who are with him, Inspect, I pray you, and see, who hath gone from us? And they inspect, and lo, Jonathan and the bearer of his weapons are not. And Saul saith to Ahiah, bring nigh the ark of god for the ark of god hath been on that day with the sons of israel and it cometh to pass while saul spake unto the priest that the noise which is in the camp of the philistines goeth on going on and becoming great 
and saul saith unto the priest remove thy hand and saul is called and all the people who are with him and they come in unto the battle and lo the sword of each hath been against his neighbour a very great destruction and the hebrews who have been for the philistines as heretofore who had gone up with them into the camp have turned round even they to be with israel who are with saul and jonathan and all the men of israel who are hiding themselves in the hill country of ephraim have heard that the philistines have fled and they pursue even they after them in battle and jehovah saveth israel on that day and the battle hath passed over to bath aven and the men of israel have been distressed on that day and saul adjureth the people saying cursed is the man who eateth food till the evening and i have been avenged of mine enemies and none of the people hath tasted food and all they of the land have come into a forest and there is honey on the face of the field and the people come in unto the forest and lo the honey dropped and none is moving his hand unto his mouth for the people feared the oath and jonathan hath not heard of his fathers adjuring the people and putteth forth the end of the rod which is in his hand and dippeth it in the honeycomb and bringeth back his hand unto his mouth and his eyes see and a man of the people answereth and saith thy father certainly adjured the people saying cursed is the man who eateth food to-day and the people are weary and jonathan saith my father hath troubled the land see i pray you that mine eyes have become bright because i tasted a little of this honey how much more if the people had well eaten to-day of the spoil of its enemies which it hath found for now the smiting hath not been great among the philistines and they smite on that day among the philistines from michmash to aijalon and the people are very wary and the people make unto the spoil and take sheep and oxen and sons of the herd and slaughter on the earth and the people eat with the blood and they declare to saul saying lo the people are sinning against jehovah to eat with the blood and he saith ye have dealt treacherously roll unto me to-day a great stone and saul saith be ye scattered among the people and ye have said to them bring ye nigh unto me each his ox and each his sheep and ye have slain them in this place and eaten and ye do not sin against jehovah to eat with the blood and all the people bring nigh each his ox in his hand that night and slaughter them there and saul buildeth an altar to jehovah with it he hath begun to build altars to jehovah and saul saith let us go down after the philistines by night and we pray upon them till the light of the morning and leave not a man of them and they say all that is good in thine eyes do and the priest saith let us draw near hither unto god and saul asketh of god do i go down after the philistines dost thou give them into the hand of israel and he hath not answered him on that day and saul saith draw ye nigh hither all the chiefs of the people and know and see in what this sin hath been to-day for jehovah liveth who is saving israel surely if it be in jonathan my son surely he doth certainly die and none is answering him out of all the people and he saith unto all israel ye ye are on one side and i and jonathan my son are on another side and the people say unto saul that which is good in thine eyes do and saul saith unto jehovah god of israel give perfection and jonathan and saul are captured and the people went out and saul saith cast between me and jonathan my son and jonathan is captured and saul saith unto jonathan declare to me what hast thou done and jonathan declareth to him and saith i certainly tasted with the end of the rod that is in my hand a little honey lo i die and saul saith thus doth god do and thus doth he add for thou dost certainly die jonathan and the people say unto saul doth jonathan die who wrought this great salvation in israel 
a profanation. Jehovah liveth, if there falleth from the hair of his head to the earth, for with God he hath wrought this day. And the people rescue Jonathan, and he hath not died. And Saul goeth up from after the Philistines, and the Philistines have gone to their place. And Saul captured the kingdom over Israel, and he fighteth round about against all his enemies, against Moab, and against the Benai Ammon, and against Edom, and against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines, and whithersoever he turneth he doth vex them. And he maketh a force, and smiteth Amalek, and delivereth Israel out of the hand of its spoiler. And the sons of Saul are Jonathan, and Ishui, and Melchishua. As to the name of his two daughters, the name of the firstborn is Merab, and the name of the younger Michal. And the name of the wife of Saul is Ahinoam, daughter of Ahimeaz. And the name of the head of his host is Abner, son of Ner, uncle of Saul. And Kish is father of Saul. And Ner, father of Abner, is son of Ahiel. And the war is severe against the Philistines all the days of Saul. When Saul hath seen any mighty man, and any son of valor, then he doth gather him unto himself. Chapter 15 And Samuel saith unto Saul, Me did Jehovah send to anoint thee for king over his people, over Israel. And now hearken to the voice of the words of Jehovah. Thus said Jehovah of hosts, I have looked after that which Amalek did to Israel, that which he laid for him in the way in his going up out of Egypt. Now go, and thou hast smitten Amalek, and devoted all that it hath, and thou hast no pity on it, and hast put to death from man unto woman, from infant unto suckling, from ox unto sheep, from camel unto ass. And Saul summoneth the people, and inspecteth them in Talaim, two hundred thousand footmen, and ten thousand are men of Judah. And Saul cometh in unto a city of Amalek, and layeth wait in a valley. And Saul saith unto the Kenite, Go, turn aside, go down from the midst of Amalek, lest I consume thee with it. And thou didst kindness with all the sons of Israel in their going up out of Egypt. And the Kenite turneth aside from the midst of Amalek. And Saul smiteth Amalek from Havilah, thy going in to Shur, which is on the front of Egypt. And he catcheth Agag, king of Amalek, alive, and all the people he hath devoted by the mouth of the sword. And Saul hath pity, also the people, on Agag, and on the best of the flock, and of the herd, and of the seconds, and on the lambs, and on all that is good, and have not been willing to devote them. And all the work, despised and wasted, it they devoted. And the word of Jehovah is unto Samuel, saying, I have repented that I caused Saul to reign for king, for he hath turned back from after me, and my words he hath not performed. And it is displeasing to Samuel, and he crieth unto Jehovah all the night. And Samuel riseth early to meet Saul in the morning, and it is declared to Samuel, saying, Saul hath come into Carmel, and lo, he is setting up to himself a monument, and goeth round, and passeth over, and goeth down to Gilgal. And Samuel cometh in unto Saul, and Saul saith to him, uh, Blessed art thou of Jehovah, I have performed the word of Jehovah. And Samuel saith, And what is the noise of this flock in mine ears, and the noise of the herd which I am hearing? And Saul saith, From Amalek they have brought them, because the people had pity on the best of the flock and of the herd in order to sacrifice to Jehovah thy God, and the remnant we have devoted. And Samuel saith unto Saul, Desist, and I declare to thee that which Jehovah hath spoken unto me to-night. And he saith to him, Speak. And Samuel saith, Art not thou, if thou art little in thine own eyes, head of the tribes of Israel? And Jehovah doth anoint thee for king over Israel, and Jehovah sendeth thee in the way, and saith, Go, and thou hast devoted the sinners, 
the amalekite and fought against them till they are consumed and why hast thou not hearkened to the voice of jehovah and dost fly unto the spoil and dost do the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah and saul saith unto samuel because i have hearkened to the voice of jehovah and i go in the way which jehovah hath sent me and bring in agag king of amalek and amalek i have devoted and the people taketh of the spoil of the flock and herd the first part of the devoted thing for sacrifice to jehovah thy god in gilgal and samuel saith hath jehovah had delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in hearkening to the voice of jehovah lo hearkening than sacrifice is better to give attention than fat of rams for a sin of divination is rebellion and iniquity and teraphim is stubbornness because thou hast rejected the word of jehovah he also doth reject thee from being king and saul saith unto samuel i have sinned for i passed over the command of jehovah and thy words because i have feared the people i also hearken to their voice and now bear i pray thee with my sin and turn back with me and i bow myself to jehovah and samuel saith unto saul i do not turn back with thee for thou hast rejected the word of jehovah and jehovah doth reject thee from being king over israel and samuel turneth round to go and he layeth hold on the skirt of his upper robe and it is rent and samuel saith unto him jehovah hath rent the kingdom of israel from thee to-day and given it to thy neighbour who is better than thou and also the pre-eminence of israel doth not lie nor repent for he is not a man to be penitent and he saith i have sinned now honour me i pray thee before the elders of my people and before israel and turn back with me and i have bowed myself to jehovah thy god and samuel turneth back after saul and saul boweth himself to jehovah and samuel saith bring ye nigh unto me agag king of amalek and agag cometh unto him daintily and agag saith surely the bitterness of death hath turned aside and samuel saith as thy sword bereaved women so is thy mother bereaved among women and samuel heweth agag in pieces before jehovah in gilgal and samuel goeth to ramath and saul hath gone unto his house to gibeah of saul and samuel hath not added to see saul till the day of his death for samuel mourned for saul and jehovah repented that he had caused saul to reign over israel the end of chapters eleven through fifteen recording by mark penfold chapters sixteen through twenty of the first book of samuel from the young's literal translation of the bible translated by robert young this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter sixteen and jehovah saith unto samuel till when art thou mourning for saul and i have rejected him from reigning over israel fill thy horn with oil and go i send thee unto jesse the bethlehemite for i have seen among his sons for myself a king and samuel saith how do i go when saul hath heard then he hath slain me and jehovah saith a heifer of the herd thou dost take in thy hand and hast said to sacrifice to jehovah i have come and thou hast called for jesse in the sacrifice and i cause thee to know that which thou dost do and thou hast anointed to me him of whom i speak unto thee and samuel doth that which jehovah hath spoken and cometh into bethlehem and the elders of the city tremble to meet him and one saith is thy coming peace and he saith peace to sacrifice to jehovah i have come 
sanctify yourselves and ye have come in with me to the sacrifice and he sanctifieth jesse and his sons and calleth them to the sacrifice and it cometh to pass in their coming in that he seeth eliab and saith surely before jehovah is his anointed and jehovah saith unto samuel look not unto his appearance and unto the height of his stature for i have rejected him for it is not as man seeth for man looketh at the eyes and jehovah looketh at the heart and jesse calleth unto abinadab and causeth him to pass by before samuel and he saith also on this jehovah hath not fixed and jesse causeth shammah to pass by and he saith also on this jehovah hath not fixed and jesse causeth seven of his sons to pass by before samuel and samuel saith to jesse jehovah hath not fixed on these and samuel saith unto jesse are the young men finished and he saith yet hath been left the youngest and lo he delighteth himself among the flock and samuel saith unto jesse send and take him for we do not turn round till his coming in hither and he sendeth and bringeth him in and he is ruddy with beauty of eyes and of good appearance and jehovah saith rise anoint him for this is he and samuel taketh the horn of oil and anointeth him in the midst of his brethren and prosper over david doth the spirit of jehovah from that day and onwards and samuel riseth and goeth to ramath and the spirit of jehovah turned aside from saul and a spirit of sadness from jehovah terrified him and the servants of saul say unto him lo we pray thee a spirit of sadness from god is terrifying thee uh, let our lord command we pray thee thy servants before thee they seek a skilful man playing on a harp and it hath come to pass in the spirit of sadness from god being upon thee that he hath played with his hand and it is well with thee and saul saith unto his servants provide i pray you for me a man playing well then ye have brought him in unto me and one of the servants answereth and saith lo i have seen a son of jesse the bethlehemite skilful in playing and a mighty virtuous man and a man of battle and intelligent in word and a man of form and jehovah is with him and saul sendeth messengers unto jesse and saith send unto me david thy son who is with the flock and jesse taketh an ass with bread and a bottle of wine and one kid of the goats and sendeth by the hand of david his son unto saul and david cometh in unto saul and standeth before him and he loveth him greatly and he is a bearer of his weapons and saul sendeth unto jesse saying let david i pray thee stand before me for he hath found grace in mine eyes and it hath come to pass in the spirit of sadness from god being on saul that david hath taken the harp and played with his hand and saul hath refreshment and gladness and the spirit of sadness hath turned aside from off him chapter seventeen and the philistines gather their camps to battle and are gathered to shoko which is to judah and encamp between shoko and azekah in ephes damim and saul and the men of israel have been gathered and encamp by the valley of elah and set the battle in array to meet the philistines and the philistines are standing on the mountain on this side and the israelites are standing on the mountain on that side and the valley is between them and there goeth out a man of the duelists from the camps of the philistines goliath is his name from gath his height is six cubits and a span and a helmet of brass is on his head and with a scaled coat of mail he is clothed and the weight of the coat of mail is five thousand shekels of brass and a frontlet of brass is on his feet and a javelin of brass between his shoulders and the wood of his spear is like a beam of weavers and the flame of his spear is six hundred shekels of iron 
and the bearer of the buckler is going before him and he standeth and calleth unto the ranks of israel and saith to them why are ye come out to set in array the battle am not i the philistine and ye servants to saul choose for you a man and let him come down unto me if he be able to fight with me and have smitten me then we have been to you for servants and if i am able for him and have smitten him then ye have been to us for servants and have served us and the philistine saith i have reproached the ranks of israel this day give to me a man and we fight together and saul heareth and all israel these words of the philistine and they are broken down and greatly afraid and david is son of this ephrathite of bethlehem judah whose name is jesse and he hath eight sons and the man in the days of saul hath become aged among men and the three eldest sons of jesse go they have gone after saul to battle and the name of his three sons who have gone into battle are eliab the firstborn and his second abinadab and the third shama and david is the youngest and the three eldest have gone after saul and david is going and returning from saul to feed the flock of his father at bethlehem and the philistine draweth nigh morning and evening and stationeth himself forty days and jesse saith to david his son take i pray thee to thy brethren and ephah of this roasted corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren and these ten cuttings of the cheese thou dost take in to the head of the thousand and thy brethren thou dost inspect for welfare and their pledge dost receive and saul and they and all the men of israel are in the valley of elah fighting with the philistines and david riseth early in the morning and leaveth the flock to a keeper and lifteth up and goeth as jesse commanded him and he cometh in to the path and to the force which is going out unto the rank and they have shouted for battle and israel and the philistines set in array rank to meet rank and david letteth down the goods from off him on the hand of a keeper of the goods and runneth into the rank and cometh and asketh of his brethren of welfare and he is speaking with them and lo a man of the duelists is coming up goliath the philistine is his name of gath out of the ranks of the philistines and he speaketh according to those words and david heareth and all the men of israel when they see the man flee from his presence and are greatly afraid and the men of israel say have ye seen this man who is coming up for to reproach israel he is coming up and it hath been the man who smiteth him the king doth enrich him with great riches and his daughter he doth give to him and his father's house doth make free in israel and david speaketh unto the men who are standing by him saying what is done to the man who smiteth this philistine and hath turned aside reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised philistine that he hath reproached the ranks of the living god and the people speak to him according to this word saying thus it is done to the man who smiteth him and eliab his eldest brother heareth when he speaketh unto the men and the anger of eliab burneth against david and he saith why is this thou hast come down and to whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness i have known thy pride and the evil of thy heart for to see the battle thou hast come down and david saith what have i done now is it not a word and he turneth round from him unto another and saith according to this word and the people return him word as the first word and the words which david hath spoken are heard and they declare before saul and he receiveth him and david saith unto saul let no man's heart fall because of him thy servant doth go and hath fought with this philistine and saul saith unto david <laughs> thou art not able to go unto this philistine to fight with him for a youth thou art and he a man of war from his youth and david saith unto saul 
a shepherd hath thy servant been to his father among the sheep and the lion hath come and the bear and hath taken away a sheep out of the drove and i have gone out after him and smitten him and delivered out of his mouth and he riseth against me and i have taken hold on his beard and smitten him and put him to death both the lion and the bear hath thy servant smitten and this uncircumcised philistine hath been as one of them for he hath reproached the ranks of the living god and david saith jehovah who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear he doth deliver me from the hand of this philistine and saul saith unto david go and jehovah is with thee and saul clotheth david with his long robe and hath put a helmet of brass on his head and doth clothe him with a coat of mail and david girded his sword above his long robe and beginneth to go for he hath not tried it and david saith unto saul i am not able to go with these for i had not tried and david turneth them aside from off him and he taketh his staff in his hand and chooseth for him five smooth stones from the brook and putteth them in the shepherd's habiliments that he hath even in the scrip and his sling is in his hand and he draweth nigh unto the philistine and the philistine goeth on going and drawing near unto david and the man bearing the buckler is before him and the philistine looketh attentively and seeth david and despiseth him for he was a youth and ruddy with a fair appearance and the philistine saith unto david am i not a dog that thou art coming unto me with staves and the philistine revileth david by his gods and the philistine saith unto david come unto me and i give thy flesh to the fowl of the heavens and to the beast of the field and david saith unto the philistine thou art coming unto me with sword and with spear and with buckler and i am coming unto thee in the name of jehovah of hosts god of the ranks of israel which thou hast reproached this day doth jehovah shut thee up into my hand and i have smitten thee and turned aside thy head from off thee and given the carcass of the camp of the philistines this day to the fowl of the heavens and to the beast of the earth and all the earth do know that god is for israel and all this assembly do know that not by sword and by spear doth jehovah save that the battle is jehovah's and he hath given you into our hand and it hath come to pass that the philistine hath risen and goeth and draweth near to meet david and david hasteth and runneth to the rank to meet the philistine and david putteth forth his hand unto the vessel and taketh thence a stone and slingeth and smiteth the philistine on his forehead and the stone sinketh into his forehead and he falleth on his face to the earth and david is stronger than the philistine with a sling and with a stone and smiteth the philistine and putteth him to death and there is no sword in the hand of david and david runneth and standeth over the philistine and taketh his sword and draweth it out of its sheath and putteth him to death and cutteth off with it his head and the philistines see that their hero is dead and flee and the men of israel rise also judah and shout and pursue the philistines till thou enter the valley and unto the gates of ekron and the wounded of the philistines fall in the way of shaaraim even unto gath and unto ekron and the sons of israel turn back from burning after the philistines and spoil their camps and david taketh the head of the philistine and bringeth it in to jerusalem and his weapons he hath put in his own tent and when saul seeth david going out to meet the philistine he hath said unto abner head of the host whose son is this the youth abner and abner saith thy soul liveth o king i i have not known and the king saith ask thou whose son this is the young man and when david turneth back from smiting the philistine then abner taketh him and bringeth him in before saul and the head of the philistine in his hand and saul saith unto him whose son art thou o youth and david saith son of thy servant jesse the bethlehemite chapter eighteen and it cometh to pass when he finisheth to speak unto saul that the soul of jonathan hath been bound to the soul of david 
and Jonathan loveth him as his own soul. And Saul taketh him on that day, and hath not permitted him to turn back to the house of his father. And Jonathan maketh, also David, a covenant, because he loveth him as his own soul. And Jonathan strippeth himself of the upper robe which is upon him, and giveth it to David, and his long robe, even unto his sword, and unto his bow, and unto his girdle. And David goeth out whithersoever Saul doth send him. He acted wisely, and Saul setteth him over the men of war, and it is good in the eyes of all the people, and also in the eyes of the servants of Saul. And it cometh to pass in their coming in, in David's returning from smiting the Philistine, that the women come out from all the cities of Israel to sing, also the dancers, to meet Saul the king, with tabrets, with joy, and with three stringed instruments. And the women answer, those playing, and say, Saul hath smitten among his thousands, and David among his myriads. And it is displeasing to Saul exceedingly, and this thing is evil in his eyes, and he saith, They have given to David myriads, and to me they have given the thousands, and more to him is only the kingdom. And Saul is eyeing David from that day and thenceforth. And it cometh to pass on the morrow, that the spirit of sadness from God prospereth over Saul, and he prophesieth in the midst of the house, and David is playing with his hand as day by day, and the javelin is in the hand of Saul. And Saul casteth the javelin, and saith, I smite through David, even through the wall. And David turneth round out of his presence twice. And Saul is afraid of the presence of David, for Jehovah hath been with him, and from Saul he hath turned aside. And Saul turneth him aside from him, and appointeth him to himself head of a thousand, and he goeth out, and cometh in before the people. And David is in all his ways acting wisely, and Jehovah is with him. And Saul seeth that he is acting very wisely, and is afraid of him. And all Israel and Judah love David when he is going out and coming in before them. And Saul saith unto David, Lo, my elder daughter Mirab, her I give to thee for a wife, only be to me for a son of valor, and fight the battles of Jehovah. And Saul said, Let not my hand be on him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David saith unto Saul, Who am I, and what my life, the family of my father in Israel, that I am son-in-law to the king? And it cometh to pass, at the time of the giving of Merab, daughter of Saul, to David, that she hath been given to Adriel, the Maholathite, for a wife. And Michal, daughter of Saul, loveth David, and they declare to Saul, and the thing is right in his eyes, and Saul saith, I give her to him, and she is to him for a snare, and the hand of the Philistines is on him. And Saul saith unto David, By the second thou dost become my son-in-law to-day. And Saul commandeth his servants, Speak unto David gently, saying, Lo, the king hath delighted in thee, and all his servants have loved thee, and now be son-in-law to the king. And the servants of Saul speak in the ears of David these words, and David saith, Is it a light thing in your eyes to be son-in-law to the king, and I a poor man and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul declare to him, saying, According to these words hath David spoken. And Saul saith, Thus do ye say to David, There is no delight to the king in dowry, but in a hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged on the enemies of the king. And Saul thought to cause David to fall by the hand of the Philistines. And his servants declare to David these words, and the thing is right in the eyes of David to be son-in-law to the king, and the days have not been full. And David riseth and goeth, he and his men, and smiteth among the Philistines two hundred men, and David bringeth in their foreskins, and they set them before the king to be son-in-law to the king. And Saul giveth to him Michal his daughter for a wife. And Saul seeth and knoweth that Jehovah is with David, and Michal daughter of Saul hath loved him, and Saul addeth to be afraid of the presence of David yet, 
and saul is an enemy with david all the days and the princes of the philistines come out and it cometh to pass from the time of their coming out david hath acted more wisely than any of the servants of saul and his name is very precious chapter nineteen and saul speaketh unto jonathan his son and to all his servants to put david to death and jonathan son of saul delighted exceedingly in david and jonathan declareth to david saying saul my father is seeking to put thee to death and now take heed i pray thee in the morning and thou hast abode in a secret place and been hidden and i i go out and have stood by the side of my father in the field where thou art and i speak of thee unto my father and have seen what is coming and have declared to thee and jonathan speaketh good of david unto saul his father and saith unto him let not the king sin against his servant against david because he hath not sinned against thee and because his works for thee are very good yea he putteth his life in his hand and smiteth the philistine and jehovah worketh a great salvation for all israel thou hast seen and dost rejoice and why dost thou sin against innocent blood to put david to death for naught and saul hearkeneth to the voice of jonathan and saul sweareth jehovah liveth he doth not die and jonathan calleth for david and jonathan declareth to him all these words and jonathan bringeth in david unto saul and he is before him as heretofore and there addeth to be war and david goeth out and fighteth against the philistines and smiteth among them a great smiting and they flee from his face and a spirit of sadness from jehovah is unto saul and he is sitting in his house and his javelin in his hand and david is playing with the hand and saul seeketh to smite with the javelin through david and through the wall and he freeth himself from the presence of saul and he smiteth the javelin through the wall and david hath fled and escapeth during that night and saul sendeth messengers unto the house of david to watch him and to put him to death in the morning and michal his wife declareth to david saying if thou art not delivering thy life to-night to-morrow thou art put to death and michal causeth david to go down through the window and he goeth on and fleeth and escapeth and michal taketh the teraphim and layeth on the bed and the mattress of goat's hair she hath put for his pillows and covereth with a garment and saul sendeth messengers to take david and she saith he is sick and saul sendeth the messengers to see david saying bring him up in the bed unto me to put him to death and the messengers come in and lo the teraphim are on the bed and the mattress of goat's hair for his pillows and saul saith unto michal why thus hast thou deceived me that thou dost send away mine enemy and he is escaped and michal saith unto saul he said unto me send me away why do i put thee to death and david hath fled and is escaped and cometh in unto samuel to ramoth and declareth to him all that saul hath done to him and he goeth he and samuel and they dwell in nioth and it is declared to saul saying lo david is in nioth in ramah and saul sendeth messengers to take david and they see the assembly of the prophets prophesying and samuel standing set over them and the spirit of god is on saul's messengers and they prophesy they also and they declare it to saul and he sendeth other messengers and they prophesy they also and saul addeth and sendeth messengers a third time and they prophesy they also and he goeth he also to ramath and cometh in unto the great well which is in seku and asketh and saith where are samuel and david and one saith lo in nioth in ramah and he goeth thither unto nioth in ramah and the spirit of god is upon him him also and he goeth going on and he prophesieth till his coming in to nioth in ramah and he strippeth off he also his garments and prophesieth he also before samuel 
and falleth down naked all that day and all the night therefore they say is saul also among the prophets chapter twenty and david fleeth from nioth in ramah and cometh and saith before jonathan what have i done what is mine iniquity and what my sin before thy father that he is seeking my life and he saith to him far be it thou dost not die lo my father doth not do anything great or small and doth not uncover mine ear and wherefore doth my father hide from me this thing this thing is not and david sweareth again and saith thy father hath certainly known that i have found grace in thine eyes and he saith let not jonathan know this lest he be grieved and yet jehovah liveth and thy soul liveth but as a step between me and death and jonathan saith to david what doth thy soul say and i do it for thee and david saith unto jonathan lo the new moon is to-morrow and i do certainly sit with the king to eat and thou hast sent me away and i have been hidden in a field till the third evening if thy father at all look after me and thou hast said david asked earnestly of me to run to bethlehem his city for a sacrifice of the days is there for all the family if thus he say good peace is for thy servant and if it be very displeasing to him know that the evil hath been determined by him and thou hast done kindness to thy servant for into a covenant of jehovah thou hast brought thy servant with thee and if there is in me iniquity put thou me to death and unto thy father why is this thou dost bring me in and jonathan saith far be it from thee for i certainly do not know that the evil hath been determined by my father to come upon thee and i do not declare it to thee and david saith unto jonathan who doth declare to me or what if thy father doth answer thee sharply and jonathan saith unto david come and we go out into the field and they go out both of them into the field and jonathan saith unto david jehovah god of israel when i search my father about this time to-morrow or the third day and lo good is towards david and i do not then send unto thee and have uncovered thine ear thus doth jehovah do to jonathan and thus doth he add when the evil concerning thee is good to my father then i have uncovered thine ear and sent thee away and thou hast gone in peace and jehovah is with thee as he was with my father and not only while i am alive dost thou do with me the kindness of jehovah and i die not but thou dost not cut off thy kindness from my house unto the age nor in jehovah's cutting off the enemies of david each one from off the face of the ground and jonathan covenanteth with the house of david and jehovah hath sought it from the hand of the enemies of david and jonathan addeth to cause david to swear because he loveth him for with the love of his own soul he hath loved him and jonathan saith to him to-morrow is new moon and thou hast been looked after for thy seat is looked after and on the third day thou dost certainly come down and hast come in unto the place where thou wast hidden in the day of the work and hast remained near the stone ezel and i shoot three of the arrows at the side sending out for myself at a mark and lo i send the youth go find the arrows if i at all say to the youth lo the arrows are on this side of thee take them then come thou for peace is with thee and there is nothing jehovah liveth and if thus i say to the young man lo the arrows are beyond thee go for jehovah hath sent thee away as to the thing which we have spoken i and thou lo jehovah is between me and thee unto the age and david is hidden in the field and it is the new moon and the king sitteth down by the food to eat and the king sitteth on his seat as time by time on a seat by the wall and jonathan riseth and abner sitteth at the side of saul and david's place is looked after and saul hath not spoken anything on that day for he said it is an accident he is not clean surely not clean and it cometh to pass on the second morrow of the new moon that david's place is looked after 
and saul saith unto jonathan his son wherefore hath the son of jesse not come in either yesterday or to-day unto the food and jonathan answereth saul david hath been earnestly asked of me unto bethlehem and he saith send me away i pray thee for a family sacrifice we have in the city and my brother himself hath given command to me and now if i have found grace in thine eyes let me go away i pray thee and see my brethren therefore he hath not come unto the table of the king and the anger of saul burneth against jonathan and he saith to him son of a perverse rebellious woman have i not known that thou art fixing on the son of jesse to thy shame and to the shame of the nakedness of thy mother for all the days that the son of jesse liveth on the ground thou art not established thou and thy kingdom and now send and bring him unto me for he is a son of death and jonathan answereth saul his father and saith unto him why is he put to death what hath he done and Saul casteth the javelin at him to smite him, and Jonathan knoweth that it hath been determined by his father to put David to death. And Jonathan riseth from the table in the heat of anger, and hath not eaten food on the second day of the new moon, for he hath been grieved for David, for his father put him to shame. And it cometh to pass in the morning that Jonathan goeth out into the field for the appointment with David, and a little youth is with him and he saith to his youth run find i pray thee the arrows which i am shooting the youth is running and he hath shot the arrow causing it to pass over him and the youth cometh unto the place of the arrow which jonathan hath shot and jonathan calleth after the youth and saith is not the arrow beyond thee and jonathan calleth after the youth speed haste stand not and jonathan's youth gathereth the arrows and cometh unto his lord and the youth hath not known anything only jonathan and david knew the word and jonathan giveth his weapons unto the youth whom he hath and saith to him go carry into the city the youth hath gone and david hath risen from ezel at the south and falleth on his face to the earth and boweth himself three times and they kiss one another and they weep one with another till david exerted himself and jonathan saith to david go in peace in that we have sworn we too in the name of jehovah saying jehovah is between me and thee and between my seed and thy seed unto the age and he riseth and goeth and jonathan hath gone into the city the end of chapters 16 through 20 recording by mark penfold